Another lightsaber review featuring the Polaris V3, provided by Imperial Workshop and priced at 315 US dollars. Now keep in mind that I'm an affiliate with Imperial Workshop and I have a discount code BEANS. The use of this code will take $5 off any saber order. Now I know what you think, will this be like embellished, will I just make up everything just to get you to buy it? No. It is my role to be as objective as possible while reviewing the Sabre. I don't want to shy away from any negative views I hold for any Sabre or Sabre company. It's the best way of helping companies receive much needed constructive criticism, if they need it. It's also helpful to reach out to Star Wars fans and try not to sway their decision, but to help better inform and guide them while looking for a Sabre they might want to purchase. Imperial Workshop is a trustworthy company and offers competitive prices for high quality sabers. If they weren't legitimate, I would not be working with them. Now, let's let's get into it, you know? The Polaris came with a USB Type-C charger, blade retention screws and a hex wrench, an SD card reader, this really cool thin neck Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber keychain, the saber manual, a 36 inch NeoPixel blade, and finally, the Polaris V3. On the website, it also says it includes a blade plug and a saber stand, though I didn't receive either. Either way, this didn't really bother me because I have like plenty of those. The saber itself is made of aircraft grade aluminum, 11.5 inches in length and 2 inches in diameter. Featuring a mix of blackened and silver metal, the emitter has multiple retention screw holes, 3 to be exact. The emitter also includes windows, allowing for some blade light to shine through. The emitter base has a rectangular design, kind of reminds me of the Saber Trio Vulcan emitter style. Inside the emitter shaft, we will have inhaled LED NeoPixel pins and a solid 1 inch of blade depth, making the Saber suitable for spinning in some dueling. The choke point, or the neck of the Saber, has comfortable ridges that are sanded down nicely. Towards the middle of the hilt, the texture is that of smooth metal, housing a recharge port and a cool LED lit activation switch, with an imperial insignia in the center. The Saber takes around 4 hours to charge using a computer's USB port. It's recommended to use a computer to charge the Saber, as using a power source over 5 volts could fry the board. On the hand grip, we have more ridges that are sanded down but still have residual sharpness. Closer to the pommel, we have a hex cage design that encases the crystal chamber, and is comfortable enough to hold yet still has some sharp places. The pommel has dual threading, allowing this hilt to be used as a saber staff. And most sabers from Imperial Workshop can also be used as saber staffs. To access the chassis, simply remove the hand grip. The crystal chassis is sleek and feels like it's made from a pretty strong material. The chassis crystal lights up on activation and looks pretty cool. To get access to the full chassis, simply unscrew the hand grip, then unscrew the two retention screws on the back of the hilt holding the chassis in place. After carefully pushing the activation switch through its housing, you can easily slide out the chassis. From here you get access to the soundboard, the SD card in order to change fonts, the battery, the NeoPixel pins, and the speaker. To put the saber back together, simply reverse the steps using the activation switch housing to see if the chassis is lined up properly. 
The Impure Workshop Manual will provide step-by-step -step directions on the process of updating the firmware and installing fonts. I also have a tutorial on how to install fonts if it helps to watch a video on it. Now, let's talk about some of the cons of the Saber, and there aren't that many. Con number one, the crystal chamber looks amazing, but the hex cage being open to show the crystal through the hand grip means there is no real sound chamber for proper resonance. Sound resonance in making a Saber bassy, or you know, kind of just, just loud. Just loud. I, I like loud sabers, and you know, it's it's loud. You can hear it, but it's it's not loud. If you catch my drift, I don't know. People that like collecting lightsabers, such as myself, will understand. It's not booming. It's not bassy. It doesn't get the bass. It's not a problem if you wrap your hand around the crystal chamber using a two-handed saber grip, but it's not the best solution for this problem. Con number two. Now, this is also not really that big of a deal, but the final con on my list is that some of the ridges are a little bit too sharp. Not not so much, but when you spin a lightsaber for a long time, you kind of form calluses. Those ridges can like cut you if you like hit something or you spin too fast. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Now to go over the features of the saber. The Polaris is pre-installed with 35 plus sound fonts. The S gesture controls to activate the saber by twisting the hilt for on or off, but pressing the button quickly then holding it activates and then deactivates it as well. The saber does have automatic sleep mode if you leave it idle for a long time, but you can press and hold until the saber says powering down. Powering down. To change a font, simply hold the button and release. To access a previous font, simply hold the button until the font preset noise plays. The Saber is also smooth swing enabled, has flash on clash, has blaster deflect activated by one button press while on, lockup is responsive and travels along the blade, and is activated upon hitting a surface while holding the activation button. The mode turns off by pressing the button again quickly. Drag tip activates in a similar fashion when you hold the activation and drag the tip on the floor. It also deactivates when you press the activation once. The volume control menu can be entered by holding the activation button while hitting the blade. Once it says volume menu, you can then switch the volume menu settings by hitting the button once, as it cycles from mute to 10 to 100% volume. You can exit the volume menu and select your preferred volume by holding the activation and hitting the blade against your palm. There is also a battery level indicator that tells you the percentage of the saber and can be entered after pressing the activation three times while the saber is off. Color change selection is activated by double clicking then holding the activation switch while twisting the saber. The saber should be on and pointed at the ground when doing this. Once you've entered the color selection menu, you can twist the saber at any angle to cycle through the colors. Once you find a color you like, simply hold the activation switch and the color will be selected. Okay, now let's talk about the coolest feature on the saber. The Polaris is Bluetooth enabled, meaning you can connect to the saber via your phone. The manual has step-by-step -step directions on how to achieve this. First, you need to download the Xeno Configurator app on your phone. Next, make sure your Saber is on. The same should be done for your Bluetooth switch and your phone settings. While in the app, you should get an icon asking you to connect to the Saber. Place your phone with the app open next to your Saber while it's on and not activated. You should see a Saber pop on the screen with a serial number, then click on it. Press the Confirm option after pressing on the Saber button. Then the saber will tell you the saber is connected. From here, you can pretty much adjust all the settings on your saber, like a volume, gesture control sensitivity, color of the blade, and the blade effects. My favorite function of the app is that it tells you the battery percentage of the saber, and that's pretty convenient. The manual from Imperial Workshop will tell you everything you'll need to know when using the app. But the app itself is pretty intuitive, so I don't think anyone will really have any problems controlling it. And other than my two cons, I think the Saber is definitely worth the money you spend on it. So this has been my review on the Impure Workshop Polaris V3 Xenopixel. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
add it to your favorites, and subscribe. It would really help me out. Now, there's nothing left to do but to swing the saber for a nice satisfactory end to another amazing saber review. Yeah, that's what I tell myself when I post these videos. They're amazing.